with the worldwide download celebration fast approaching on the hit mobile game Dokkan Battle, I'd like to address another fast approaching event. That is of course, the Dragon Ball Heroes collaboration. Last year we were introduced to Super Saiyan God Trunks, Xenopan, Mechkabura, Rebellu and the brainwashed Supreme Kai of Time, as well as a bunch of easy A's for older heroes units. So let's discuss what might happen in the 2022 celebration. As last year's celebration had a focus on the Dark Empire and Dark King Mechkabura sagas, this year will likely focus on the later fights and stories of heroes, more specifically those we haven't seen in Dokkan yet. Parts of the Universal Conflict Saga have been put into the game, therefore the more likely sagas will be the Universe Creation Saga, which is episode 21 to 28 and 30 to 32 of the promotional anime, and the New Space Time War Saga, which is episode 33 to episode 40 of the promotional anime. Let's get the two obvious choices out of the way, uh, Evolution Blue Gogeta and the Crimson Mars Saiyan aka Goku Black. Now I thought they might appear last year but obviously that didn't happen, uh, but this year it is the perfect opportunity to do so, and uh, I can already imagine what type of super attack animations they may have. But let's talk about the not so obvious choices, that being super full power Saiyan 4 Limit Breaker Goku and Vegeta. Now whether or not we get an LR or two in this celebration is at this point unknown, as at the time of recording this there is no Dragon Ball Heroes LR in Dokkan, nor is there a crossover category LR. This year may change that, uh, for a fact one super attack they could have would be the dual dragon fist as we saw in the promotional anime against Janemba. They may also choose to include Super Saiyan 4 Limit Breaker, Gogeta or Vegito, but I highly doubt this would make sense without an EZA for the physical Super Saiyan 4 Vegito, or some of the other current units which I'll talk about a little later. Evil Saiyan Turles, Berserk Blue Vegeta and Ultra Instinct Goku, both Sign and Master, are high possibilities due to their involvement in the New Space Time War Saga. More than likely there will be summonable units like Super Saiyan God Trunks. Now the last notable candidate is the Universal Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Now it's a lot less likely since it's a more recent form, but it exists, it has a basic Kamehameha attack, if the devs wanted to he is certainly an option. We don't have Hearts, Super Hearts or even Super Saiyan 4 Limit Breaker Broly, now I know the fight between Super Saiyan Blue, Goku and Hearts in the anime was very well received, so they may see this as a justification to include Hearts in Dokkan, who could have an active skill to transform into his god killer form. Now I'm not too sure about Limit Breaker Broly unless they choose to include the Limit Breaker Vegeta with him, basically the justification for most of these units relies on who they were fighting against or with in the hero's material and if the devs choose to release them alongside them. Now in regards to free to play cards, it's highly unlikely that they create a free to play Ultra Instinct Goku from these sagas as he'll probably be better suited towards a summon banner. Therefore the units which in my opinion make the most sense to be free to play units are the Golden Freezer and Golden Metal Cooler from the New Space Time War Saga as well as the Warrior in Black that we can see go Super Saiyan in that same saga. There are other potential candidates like Margin Omega Shenron or King of Destruction as they call him, Dr. W and his transform state as well as Angel Cell, but uh, if anything they'll either be free to play units without a Dokkan Awakening or not included at all due to their limited screen time and or relevance. Now let's talk about EZAs as well as other awakenings that we haven't gotten yet. Now with the sheer scale of units that we have seen this past year, I strongly believe that the physical Super Saiyan 4 Vegito has to receive an easy A. Now I've gone through and I've created what I think might be a good kit for him, here it is. So for his leader skill, I've put crossover category key plus 4 and HP attack and defense plus 200% up, or super type key plus 3 and HP attack and defense plus 130% up. So it's a bonus to the crossover category and just added in the super type bonus there uh, as an added extra. Now as for his super attack, it's Galactic Spirit Sword, so it massively raises attack and defense for one turn and causes immense damage to the enemy. Pretty standard, pretty good. Uh, his passive skill now, Strongest Countermeasure. 
Key plus 2, attack and defense plus 170% up to himself. Crossover category allies, key plus 3, and attack and defense plus 50% up. Uh, giant 8 power category allies, key plus 2, and attack and defense plus 40% up. So, bit of an added bonus to both of those categories there. And I've also included something for super type allies. So, key plus 2, and attack and defense plus 30% up there. He's got a high chance of evading enemy super attack and countering with tremendous power. Guards all attacks within the same turn after being attacked. So that last part there with the guard, I sort of stolen from Janembu, or you know whatever his name is in Dokkan. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is a fitting uh, passive skill when he's easy aid. You know, you've got the bonus to crossover giant ape and uh, the super type allies. So really, it helps him become more of an all-around sort of character instead of just limited to Dragon Ball Heroes category. So, so not too bad there. Link skills categories are all the same as well. Now next up we have a more debatable unit for an EZA which is the Super Saiyan God Trunks which is a unit I predicted for last year's celebration I should say. Um, well yes this is very recent um, his kit is too limited and his issues can't really be solved with any other teams or categories. So I think an EZA will really solve these issues quite nicely. So I'd like to display them here. His leader skill, Dragon Ball Heroes category, key plus 4, HP and attack and defense plus 200% up. Or legendary existence category, key plus 3, and attack and defense, or oh sorry, HP attack and defense plus 130% up. So uh, further boost to Dragon Ball Heroes category in his leader skill. Legendary existence, again debatable. I considered adding a different category, but I think when I have a look at it, the only other category that could replace Legendary Existence is Entrusted Will. As with both of those categories I just mentioned, there's only one leader, so another leader should help quite nicely. Uh, his Super Attack, Key Sword Breaker, massively raises attack and defense for one turn, causes immense damage to enemy and seals Super Attack. A little bit of a difference there, still very standard, still very good. Uh, now his passive skill, Protector of Gods. So attack and defense plus 40% per Dragon Ball Heroes category or legendary existence ally on the team. Uh, plus an additional attack and defense plus 120% up and a high chance of performing a critical hit when he's performing a super attack. Plus a medium chance of performing an additional super attack. Randomly changes key spheres of a certain type to rainbow key spheres. A medium chance of nullifying enemy super attack. Now, this is a major change right here. So first of all, uh, explaining the first bit. Per Dragon Ball Heroes category or Legendary Ex Existence, sorry, ally on the team, he gets attack and defense plus 40% up. So, that buff there doesn't actually include himself, so it's going to be around the 240% up maximum for attack and defense for that first part of this passive skill, which is pretty nice. Um, High transforming critical hit, yep, that's fairly standard, I think that's part of his regular passive. Plus a medium chance performing an additional super attack, I've added that in just because it um, really helps him out. I randomly changed his key spheres with a certain type to rainbow key spheres and removed that previous uh, limitation to only for Dragon Ball Heroes characters. Uh, so that's opened him up to more, uh, more teams and more units. A medium chance of nullifying enemy super attack. And the last part there, very important. So, uh, when he nullifies enemies a super attack, he plays that um, unawakened super attack, much like Super Saiyan 4 Vegito. So he'll showcase that super attack and nullify the enemy super. So, pretty good there. Um, solid buff, really needed. Again, the leader skill, legendary existence, and entrusted will can probably interchange that. To make it uh, a lot better but yeah now Super Saiyan 4 Broly is another candidate for an easy A but he could definitely use it so I've gone ahead and created a hypothetical kit for him leader skill giant 8 power key plus 4 HP attack and defense plus 150% up or extreme type key plus 3 and HP attack and defense plus 100% up so fairly standard boost to giant 8 power and just included the extreme type there um, to be honest, it might be needed, it might not be needed, it depends on how overpowered or how much of a boost they're planning to give to Broly or to any hero's unit in general, or crossover unit I should say in general. Uh, super attack, gigantic destruction, 
raises attack for one turn, causes immense damage to enemy and greatly lowers defense, so just added that attack buff there for him. Because it's Broly after all, he's overpowered, we all know it. Uh, passive skill, Demon on the loose, so key plus 3 and attack plus 40% for all allies, plus an additional attack and defense plus 150% up when performing a super attack. Launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack. When there's another giant ape category or crossover category ally attacking in the same turn, activates guard for the rest of the turn when a super attack is performed. Just try to improve his attack a lot more and also remove the limitation of just a giant ape power category and included crossover category. Um, now the last bit there, activating guard for the rest of the turn, um, was more attributed to the fact that this is Broly, he doesn't take too much damage, you know, he's supposed to be a tank. If this were Limit Breaker Broly, then I probably would have added like, um, reduces damage taken by 50% or something like that for a turn. But um, this is just regular Super Saiyan 4 Broly, so. Um, even so, uh, very good boost, a nice uh, buffs to him, and hopefully something like this, if they include it, should make him a lot more viable. Now here's an interesting one, Super Saiyan 3 Xeno Gohonks, and here's his potential EZA kit. So, Super Int Type Key plus 3, and HP and Attack and Defense plus 150% up, or Defenders of Justice category, Key plus 2, and HP and Attack and Defense plus 100% up. So, um, he actually just boosts a type, not a category, originally. Thought I might add something there, just there's a side, uh, side buff, if you will. Um, Super attack, raises attack and defense for one turn, causes immense damage to enemy and seals super attack. Uh, yeah, fairly standard there. Passive skill, uh, attack and defense plus 130% off for all allies in the same turn, plus an additional attack and defense plus 40% off with each super attack performed up to 160%. Launches an additional super attack when there's another Dragon Ball Heroes or Defenders of Justice category ally attacking in the same turn or when the target enemy is in attack down or defense down status. Medium chance of stunning enemies when performing a normal attack. So, this one was a little interesting to create because I didn't really know how to make him sort of unique in a way, but I think I've managed to do that there. So, all allies in the same turn get a pretty hefty attack and defense buff. Um, if he launches four super attacks, it gets a attack and defense buff of 160%. And um, he has a medium chance of stunning enemies. So when he does a normal attack, like for example an additional attack, uh, he has a medium chance of stunning enemies there. So that's pretty nice. And finally, I've added a category for him, Bond of Master and Disciple, because technically he's a fusion of those two. The passive skill's name is literally Fusion of Master and Disciple. So, you know, it's appropriate to add that category there for him. So the last hypothetical EZA I have to show you guys is Super Saiyan Combo, who can turn into a giant ape. Leader skill is not too interesting, just extreme class, key plus 4, HP attack defense plus 100% up. So if you don't have tech transforming Freezer, this guy is a somewhat viable replacement for him. Uh, his super attack causes immense damage and greatly lowers attack and defense, with a medium chance of stunning the enemy. Uh, his passive skill, key plus 3 and attack and defense plus 150% up. Plus an additional attack and defense, plus 50% up for all allies in the same turn. He reduces damage received by 50% for two turns. Medium chance of launching an additional super attack and a high chance of stunning super class enemies after receiving an attack. And of course he turns into a great ape when his HP is 50% or less. So, fairly straightforward there. Decent buff for him. Definitely makes him that little bit more viable. Um, We'll see what they do with him in the official EZA, if they give him one, that is. So other candidates for EZAs are basically every other crossover summon or previous heroes unit that hasn't received one, uh, save, you know, maybe Mechikabura because he's so broken. Um, but if they do uh, a crossover celebration in general, then that's the excuse they need to chuck units like Intemigra, Strength Super Mirror and the Xenoverse Physical Mirror some easy A's because they desperately need one to remain even somewhat relevant. As for the free-to-play units, the beat that Dokken awakens into Great Salmon 4 and the agility arms from World Mission really need a boost because most of the units in the crossover and heroes categories can use a solid boost. 
Now, as for actual Dokkan Awakenings, for sure Super Saiyan 4 Bardock and Gohan require them, as well as the Corrupted Supreme Kai of Time and Robelu. It's non-negotiable, really. Uh, I've read somewhere that every two years, the units that don't have Awakenings will get an Awakening. You know, in this case, I hope it's true for these units because they desperately need them. Now, finally, there's the question of what events may take place. And of course, you have your standard story events with free-to-play characters, as well as, although unlikely, a support memory from the promotional anime. Now, I have no evidence to back up if this is even happening. I have nothing there. This is just a thought that's come up. And it would definitely be interesting to see. So let's see if they do that. For sure, there'll be at least one or two story events, a few Dokkan events for any new cards, and some EZA battles. I don't believe it would suit the celebration to include an Extreme Z Awakening area unless they plan to mass awaken previous units. Uh, of course they can do what they've always done before and just have an EZA battle or two where you can fight all the units in the 30 levels to get all their medals. Uh, as for campaigns, we've got the obvious stuff, um, you know, login bonuses, summon banners. And now here's the real question, with the high chance of sales for stones, Will we get another special Dragon Ball Heroes themed Dragon Stone? If so, you might be wondering what units will be available, to which I'll say more than likely it'll take the format of the last one, the, uh, if I can pull up the name, Super Dragon Ball Heroes crossover special Dragon Stone. So pretty much all the old units will come back there, possibly adding the units from 2021. So if you didn't get the God Trunks, Mechikabura or Xenopan, there's uh, one option there for you besides summoning. Uh, when we look at social media campaigns, last year we had questions to answer, as well as challenges such as clearing the God Trunks Dokkan event 110,000 times. Day 11 in that number it was referring to Super Dragon Ball Heroes 11th anniversary, so they might go that route. They could also pull a Legends and do something like a retweet campaign on Twitter or something on Facebook. Keep in mind that whatever number is associated with these celebrations and campaigns, it will be 12 because of Dragon Ball Heroes' recent 12th anniversary. But uh, that's my thoughts. Uh, what do you guys think? How about you let me know in the comments below. Uh, thanks very much for stopping by. I appreciate that. And you guys have a good one. Peace.